the real war isn't between a few squabbling houses. It's between the living and the dead. And make no mistake, my lady, the dead are coming. One of the interesting things when I was asked to get on board this project was dragons, shadow babies, white walkers, various forms of magic. All that stuff is an extremely expensive backdrop to a magnificent tale of legacy, power, corruption, jealousy, and this wonderful soup of these amazingly written characters. On your night. Is that on your night? Princess. Gods, what are you doing here? Shireen Baratheon. I had a couple of scenes with Shireen that I loved doing. The most delicate and physically damaged person who hasn't had any love in her life, certainly from uh, her mother and father. And to have her level of humanity and decency and cleverness and brightness, he just treats her as an equal. And I really like that aspect of the relationship that they had. You're late. I thought you weren't coming. In a sense, they're almost like a husband and wife. Because <laughs> she teaches him and scolds him. You'll never read well if you move your lips. That's how children do it. They're obviously drawn to each other. I mean, I, I think in a sense, Davos would have most definitely be looking for a replacement for the son that he loved and lost. One of the most bizarre things I've ever filmed was in this freezing cold cave. Strange that this Lord of Light asks you to work in the shadows. Poor old Carice. She was down to her skin and was delivering this shadow baby in this cave. I remember looking at the monitor and seeing this beautifully lit picture of Carice in this very strange setting and position. And I was struck at how much like a Caravaggio it was, like a Renaissance painting. It was regarded when it was seen as one of the bizarrest things ever seen on television. It was pretty bizarre to film as well, I can tell you. I shouldn't imagine I'd be filming anything like that ever again in my life. Last time I saw her, I told Red Killer if I ever saw her again. Favorite day on set. It's very difficult to pick one out because there, there's such a diversity. Your Grace? My return at the beginning of season three when I walk into the room and, uh, and I attempt to kill Melisandre. Death by fire is the purest death. <laughs> that was really cool. She's a mother of demons! One of the wonderful things about this show is just when you think you've got a handle on how it's gonna go, or who's gonna take you out, or whatever it may be, this curveball comes in and smacks you in the mouth. I, Stannis, of the House Baratheon, first in my name, rightful King of the Andals, and the first men sentenced you to die. Bizarrely, if I'd have said to anybody that the person who saves Davos's life, having been condemned to death, is Melisandre, you go, what? You need him. He has a part to play in the war to come. We kill off a lot of loved and not so loved characters, usually when you least expect it. And yet, Davos is one of the kind of few characters in it that keeps appearing to be <laughs> sailing very close to the wind, almost getting killed. And when you think he's gone, he comes back. I thought you were dead. I heard you were dead. Everyone thought you were dead. I've always kind of liked the irony of that. Do your knuckle bones bring you luck? Well, life's been good since you hacked them off, Your Grace. And it's four less fingernails to clean. At the beginning of season three, I said the one thing that I'd like to take away from the show when I leave is the scrotum-like bag that piled my... <laughs> my finger bones. Never understood why I had to wear them. Reminds me where I come from and where I am now. And I went missing for four and a half years. And Alec, our wonderful costume person, came round to me and went, look what I found. My daughter has it on her wall of awesome. I nicked a little bit of obsidian, a little bit of dragon glass. She's got that there. I hope it doesn't get too hot because it'll melt. Literally, it's tar. Of course, I've got the stag that I gave to Shireen. I took that and gave that to my daughter. I told her to hold it in her hand when the scene was going on. I shouldn't have done that. She was in floods of tears. <laughs> so I got in trouble over that. I miss the ensemble nature of doing what we're doing. 
the ensemble work, which has been the most rewarding for me. Every day was a joy coming in on this, you know, apart from being up at four o'clock in the morning and and your waterproof socks letting in and your... <laughs> it's not, it's definitely unglamorous. <laughs> it ain't the Caribbean. It's been extraordinary. Any actor worth his salt would like to be in something that is the highest quality possible. This show will be discovered by generations to come. It's timeless, magnificent. It's just glorious. It was great fun. We did a lot of laughing. Don't hit me. You're on camera. It was wonderful, wonderful time. There's a decency and a, and a, a mutual respect that I've never come across on, on any other job. We've been all blessed that we've bumped into each other. I can't thank you all enough. Thank you very, very much.